The House approved an $819 billion stimulus package Wednesday, marking one of the most expensive pieces of legislation ever to move through Congress. Despite an all-out lobbying push by President Obama, the bill passed without a single Republican vote. Eleven Democrats also opposed the measure. The Los Angeles Times says the package is the largest attempt since World War II to use the federal budget to redirect the course of the nation's economy. The two-year stimulus plan totals $275 billion in tax cuts and nearly $545 billion in domestic spending. It would provide up to $1,000 per year in tax relief for most families, increase funding for alternative energy production, and direct more than $300 billion in aid to states to rebuild schools, provide health care to the poor, and reconstruct highways and bridges. House Republicans argued the bill tilted heavily toward new spending instead of tax cuts, and that would do little to stimulate the economy. This is Georgia Republican Paul Brune. I see this as a huge leap toward socialism as a nation. It's creating new government programs. It's creating new government jobs that don't have any sunlight to those programs, to those jobs. It expands programs that are already there. It further some of the tax relief I believe, and I hope the gentleman will agree with me, actually just furthers, th through the refundable tax credits, a dependency upon government. My friend Star Parker had, wrote a book one time that she called Uncle Sam's Plantation. And what this does is it economically enslaves people. And that's what we see happening. President Obama hailed the passage of the legislation and made no mention of the unanimous Republican opposition. He'll now turn his attention to the Senate, where Democrats are scheduled to begin debate on the measure on Monday, and the price tag is likely to reach $900 billion. Hours before yesterday's House vote, President Obama told a group of about 100 business leaders that Congress must not delay efforts to restart the economy and put people back to work. The businesses that are shedding jobs to stay afloat, they can't afford an action or delay. The workers who are returning home to tell their husbands and wives and children that they no longer have a job. And all those who live in fear that their job will be next on the cutting blocks, they need help now. They are looking to Washington for action, bold and swift. And that is why I hope to sign an American recovery and reinvestment plan into law in the next few weeks. Now, most of the money that we're investing as part of this plan will get out the door immediately and go directly to job creation, generating or saving three to four million new jobs. And the vast majority of these jobs will be created in the private sector because, as these CEOs well know, business, not government, is the engine of growth in this country. Obama's comments come at a time when the economy that is losing more than half a million jobs a month, including more than 65,000 layoffs, announced just this week. William Greider joins us now, the national affairs correspondent for The Nation magazine, the author of several books, including The Soul of Capitalism, Opening Paths to a Moral Economy, and One World Ready or Not, The Manic Logic of Global Capitalism. His forthcoming book is called Come Home America, the rise and fall and redeeming promise of our country. He joins us in our firehouse studio. Welcome to Democracy Thanks, Now. Amy. It's good to have you here in the Likewise. studio. Yes. Um, the state of the economy right now, what President Obama just said, the fact that yeah. they've pushed through this war, more than $800 billion economic stimulus package, the House at this point, with as Boehner, I think, came onto the floor with a holding his hand up in a big zero, saying the Republicans are not going to give them anything. The Republicans, it's very clear, they are, they are staking out a sort of uh, what they think is a no-lose, hard-right position. We will be against anything significant this new president is attempting because we know it's going to fail, not because, it's in, not because it's Obama's fault, but because this force, the negative forces bearing down on our economy and the world are overwhelming. So they think, you know, six months from now, they will say, we told you this was socialism, we told you this was wasteful, et cetera. Um, I, think they're, I think they're wrong on several scores. I think, I think the president is doing what he said he would do. He's trying to be bipartisan. And I, I suspect he will keep doing that regardless of the Republican position because he understands that the Countries in deep trouble and people are not interested in another cat and dog fight. They want to see something happen. If it doesn't work, 
do something more, try something else. But but the idea of just standing back and and, and making their ideological speeches about socialism is is ridiculous. It seems like the person who's leading the way now, uh, who lost a, a little um, support over the last few years, but is coming back with a vengeance, is Rush Limbaugh leading the charge. Is he is he pounding that drum? Well, he's welcome to it. Um, I th I think there's a I think there's a long-term political strategy that the president is is following, which is is good for him and good for the country, maybe, that in which he said he's speaking not to Rush Limbaugh, not to John Boehner and the right wingers in the Congress. He's talking to just folks all across the country, including Republicans. Now. I'd like you to lay out what the terms of this bill are, what the package are, but then I want to go beyond the Democratic-Republican spectrum yeah, about what you yeah. think needs to happen. What's in this bill? Um, a lot of really good stuff that, that will be stimulative just because it keeps, either keeps people working or, or it creates new jobs and, and begins, only begins, but begins these deeper uh, reform imperatives the country faces like energy conservation and and uh, conversion like uh, ecological protection um, expanding health care for people especially at the bottom end of the of the income ladder it's it's in any other season amy it would be quite extraordinary to stand back and see what they're doing in our present circumstances, I have to say it is probably not enough. Well, you've said to, it's two or three times too small. Yeah, I mean, you can measure what the what's missing now in demand and and uh, and business activity, and lay it alongside this package. And this package looks way inadequate. Um, I think the White House understands that, but they they're not going to triple it. What, what they are doing is starting a process that will at least perhaps slow the hemorrhage. That's, I'm sure that's their hope. There, there are a bunch of obstacles that, that I think uh, make it very difficult to get out of this ditch. One of them is scale, the scale of what, of what kind of response you're... you're uh, another is the financial system, which despite the hundreds of billions, pumped into banks is still essentially dysfunctional. And they're now wrestling at the Treasury Department and the White House with, okay, how do we change the game that Henry Paulson and the Republicans played for six, nine months unsuccessfully? And you expect someone like Timothy Geithner, uh, who yesterday we had on independent Senator Bernie Sanders, who was opposed to his confirmation, saying he was part of this massive problem. Do you expect that he would be able well, to? I am among those who urged our new president not to appoint him for that very reason. And, and uh, Did you talk to Obama about no, that? No, no. I'm just, uh, in the pages of the nation, I, I'm not sure he's a reader, but perhaps he will become a reader as things get worse. I. Uh, I've been writing for some months. The, the system is, is not just broken and not just injured. It is collapsed. And as long as the government continues to play putting Humpty Dumpty back together again, it, I think it will fail. That's not an ideological statement. It's just I think it's a reality. That, that, and, and so I hope, without great confidence, that uh, Larry Summers, the economic advisor, and Tim Geithner and the president decide um, to, to take a deep breath, jump over the political barriers, and say, we are taking control of the banking system temporarily, maybe for a few years. But we have to make this system function for the American economy right now. And, and handing them money and asking them to do the right thing is not sufficient. We know that. It's not just their excesses. It's, it's the fact that the banks have a, a very clear self-interest in not lending, in not beginning investment. Uh, they're hunkering down, trying to save themselves from total failure. Uh, once the government makes that recognition, then it can direct things 
more forcefully and and uh, and intelligently. And, and I, I don't expect him to do that. But I, I just add this: I hope, I hope that the president is saying to his economic uh, wizards, "Okay, we're going to do your plan, your halfway steps, and there are many parts to it." But what's your second plan? When this doesn't succeed, what do I do then? Because if they don't do that, they're going to wind up caught in the same game that Henry Paulson and George Bush were caught in. You try this, you throw some money this way, you throw it that way, nothing happens, and then you come back with a new plan and so forth. Bill Greider, we're going to come back to this discussion. I want to ask you more about nationalizing the banks. Bill Greider is with us, national affairs correspondent for The Nation magazine, his forthcoming book, Come Home America. Stay with us.